On behalf of the people of Chalcis, I formally agree to the- ah! Eritrea will not be silent! Your Federation is not welcome here! Ah! Enterprise, emergency beam out now! No! Please, no! Ambush, Commander. He's got a severe concussion, massive swelling in the amygdala. Couldn't be in a worse part of the brain. What do you mean? Responsible for the brain's emotional memories. And in this case, the hemorrhaging's terminal. Unless I'm mistaken, Doctor, conventional treatment should prove ineffective against such injuries in that region of the brain. The captain's brain, Spock. He's dying and that's all you have to say? On the contrary, I was about to suggest Alcacine. You can't be serious. It's not even out of trials. We don't know the dosage, the side effects. Hell, we don't even know if the damn treatment would even work here. In recent Starfleet medical studies, Alcacine has shown promise and otherwise fatal neurological injuries in 41.2% of patients. And in 20% of patients, the damage was worse. Forget. Alcacine. Captain, you do understand. Doctor, reactivity is spiking again. Jim. This is an experimental drug. There's no tell- Do it! Do it now! Readings are stabilizing. Neurological activity is returning to baseline. What happened? You instructed the doctor to administer an experimental drug to reset your central nervous system. I did? I guess I did. Well, it was the right call, Jim. Vitals are holding up. That dose saved your life. You're not going to try to take over my practice now, are you? <laughs> Captain, while I am pleased at your recovery, there is a time-sensitive mission at hand on the planet's yes. surface. Yes, of course. Oh. Easy does it, Jim. Take it slow for a while. I don't want to see you back here in an hour. I'm fine, Bones. Thank you. Can anything stop that man? Nothing I've seen yet. Bridge. Spock. Holberg 917G. Mr. Flint. The android girl. Reyna. You remember her? I remember everything. Everything. Not my finest hour. You were in great turmoil after those events, Captain. I acted in a manner in which I felt would spare you pain. Perhaps upon reflection, it was not my place to do so. She was, however, simply a machine. She was human. Whatever she started out as, she was human when we when I pushed her too far. Lieutenant, open a channel of Calcis. Channel open, sir. Captain Kirk, thank the gods. Well, my ship's physician does occasionally earn his pay, Minister. I am so relieved to hear it. I cannot apologize enough for that. Attack! Our sister world opposes our desire to join the Federation. They will stop at nothing to prevent it. Well, Minister, their attempt to derail our alliance has failed. I pray that you are correct. The Eritreans have promised swift action and on a global scale. Your Federation's gift of the planetary defense grid will provide the protection Kelsey's needs. So let us proceed, Captain. We are ready to activate the console, with your permission, and 
the command code, of course. Captain? The passcode, Captain. Captain? Frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Minister, may we have a moment for a brief diagnostic procedure? Yes, of course, if you so wish. Close frequency. I can't remember the password. I recommend hailing Starfleet Command. We can obtain the passcode directly from them. The CNC authorized me to lock down the console with my own encrypted password and to initialize the event only if I decided that the Chalcedians were ready to join the Federation. So the passcode is known only to you. Dr. McCoy's treatment has had some unintended side effects. Yes, that must be, that must be it. Mr. Spock, you have the con. <laughs> Lieutenant Palmer, please inform Starfleet Command that the Chalcidian Defense Grid console may be defective. Request an ETA for a replacement. Right away, sir. Mr. Scott, I believe the device has been taken to engineering. Aye, but if the cat used a personal code. Mr. Chekhov, you do have experience with cryptography, do you not? Yes, sir. At the Academy, I once decoded a Zindi in Please assist Mr. Scott in unlocking and reinitializing the Planetary Defense Console. Sir. Spock to Sigbay. Commander? 
Energy signature from the surface of Eritrea. It's an interplanetary ballistic missile. Confirmed. I'm reading a high-yield atomic warhead leaving the planet's atmosphere. Mr. Spock, we're being hailed by... By the minister, I presume. On screen. It's happening. Our sister world has launched a weapon which will strike Calcis within two hours. Where is Captain Kirk? This is First Officer Spock. We are monitoring the activity on Eritrea, Minister. I am aware... The Federation promised us a planetary defense grid. Where is your captain? Captain Kirk is recovering from injuries suffered from the attack. Please stand by for further instructions. Enterprise out. Intercept course, Commander. Remain in orbit, but monitor the situation. Mr. Sulu, you have the bridge. Is it the concussion bones? The drug? Give me a minute, will ya? It must be. I, I remember the attack. I remember being here in sick bay, but I can't remember the passcode. Is that all you want to tell me? Spock told you, didn't he? Of course he did, Jim. He's worried about you. I'm not crazy, Bones. Sure you are. That's why we like you. It can't be right. What is it? That's impossible. What? A portion of your heart tissue is shutting down. Chief Medical Officer's Log, Stardate 6182.3. I may have reached the limits of my expertise. The captain's heart is progressively weakening, and I must admit, I have no medical explanation. Progress report, Mr. Scott. There is no progress, Mr. Spock. I cannot initialize this beastie without the captain's passcode. I've done all I can do. Ensign, have you applied a brute force algorithm to override the device's lockout? Sir, Deutrona consoles are designed to deactivate in the event of multiple access attempts. Starfleet protocol. I can keep trying to circumvent the encryption, but it could take days. Please, continue. Mr. Spock, how's the cop? Will he be all right? It is uncertain at this time. Is there anything we can do? You are presently doing it, Mr. Scott. The priority is the activation of this console and the protection of the Chalcidian homeworld. I... It keeps coming up as localized heart failure, but the myocardial tissue isn't dead. It's not even damaged. Certain muscle fibers are just atrophying. You didn't see her, did you, Bones? We served on the Farragut together. We were... Very close. But that was 13 years ago. Tycho 4. 200 crewmen dead. She was one of them. And you blamed yourself. I knew you were close with Captain Garavik, but I didn't know about. I can't. I never spoke about her. I thought I could forget. Like I could forget. Jim. I'm not sure your condition is... medical. Whatever caused you suddenly to remember what Spock erased, it's unlocked something very deep. I'm calling Dr. McKenna. Have her bring a psycho tricorder. I don't need a shrink, Bones. You don't know what you need. Well, apparently neither do you, Doctor. I'm sorry, Bones. That was... 
That was unnecessary. But not inaccurate. You're right, Jim. I don't know why this is happening. But I'll be damned if you're gonna tell me there's nothing wrong in that stubborn head of yours. Mr. Spock, Dr. McCoy has cleared me to return to duty. I have? The good doctor suggested a visit to the ship's counselor, which the patient has respectfully declined. Captain, in this instance, I concur with the doctor. Given the circumstances, a psychiatric evaluation is advisable. Ganging up on me now? Duly noted, gentlemen. Captain, are you not concerned as to the reason for the affliction? The affliction is a result of the Algocene. Why, Spock, do you have another theory? Because I'd love to hear it. Perhaps not so much a theory as... Are you following me, sir? You see the same things that I do. We speak the same language. Uh, I'm fine, Spock. I'm Captain. fine, Spock. Fine. Incoming message from Starfleet Command. A replacement console is four Earth days away. Inform the Captain. And Commander Spock as well. Sir, the Eritrean warhead has increased velocity. Time to impact. At current rate and trajectory, 59 minutes. Phasers on standby. We're having trouble getting a weapons lock. Increased power to directional beam. Already tried, sir. It's no good. We've lost sensor contact with the warhead. Destroyed? No, sir. It's just vanished. First officer's personal log. The Enterprise has lost track of the inbound missile, despite all attempts to locate it. And while Captain Kirk has stabilized after his recent cardiac episode, his condition remains a mystery. Minister, I wish I could tell you that twin planets are rarely at odds with each other. Unfortunately, that's all too often the case. Generations ago, we chose a simple spiritual way of life. But in touch with the mysteries of nature, the Eritreans chose a more materialistic philosophy. Instead of celebrating the differences, they demonstrated hostility and disdain for our ways. Well, the Federation is comprised of great diversity. We applaud your values and welcome you into that diversity. This defense grid will protect your planet against Eritrea's hostility. You have our thanks, Captain. And on behalf of the people of Calcis, I formally agree to- ah, Eritrea will not be silent! Federation is not wanted here! Enterprise, emergency beam up now! No! No, please, no! Was the captain's cranial injury enough to cause hallucinations and cardiomyopathy? The injury's healed. Maybe the Alcacine? Well, I can't speak to the physical issues, nor can I help with the psychological ones, unless the captain permits me. And right now, he certainly doesn't seem to want... Dr. McKenna, may I have a word with my senior officers, please? Uh, Spock and I felt the uh, ship's counselor could be helpful, Jim. Ah, thank you, Doctor. Commander, your feelings are noted. You're dismissed. Status report. Eritrea's warhead will strike Calcis in less than an hour. For unknown reasons, a weapons lock is not possible. If the planetary defense grid is not on How are by Scotty and Chekhov doing with the console? Mr. Scott's efforts to decrypt your passcode have been unsuccessful. Perhaps Dr. McCoy can synthesize a truth serum. I believe in you, my husband. How long till the missile reaches the planet? As I just stated, Captain, less than an hour. Kirk. Come here, Monty. I will bear you. 
many strong stones. Jim, you've got to do something about this or we'll have to. Is that a threat, Doctor? As chief medical officer of this ship, it's my job to ensure the safety We're of wasting you. time. Return to your stations. I'll be on the bridge. Wait. Wait! Whatever it is, let me help. Oh! Captain, are you okay? I was just on my way to the bridge. Uh, it's that way, sir. Yes, of course. There's no medical evidence to indicate the visions are a side effect of Alcacine injections, Doctor. So, you believe the Captain is seeing ghosts? I believe the Captain believes he is seeing ghosts, regardless of whether he is willing to admit it. But you don't think they're real, do you? You gotta be joking. On the contrary, Vulcan history often refers to the Katra, the soul. And here I thought Vulcans were a people of science. To be a people of science is to acknowledge that sometimes science points to something more. Vulcans are also a people of spirit. The two are not as contradictory as many assume. Sulu, I need a lock on that missile. Sir, there's no way I can... Then estimate from the last known trajectory and fire blind if you have to. Aye, sir, coming about. Compensating for variance. Variance? There's a 2.5 drag coefficient every time I make a course correction. Nothing we can handle. Drag? Sir, the warhead may be venting drive plasma, clogging our impulse manifold. That could be what's scrambling the targeting sensors. Spock? A charged particle burst from the deflector dish would ignite the plasma. We'll only get one shot at this. We'll have to be quick. Ten second window at most. Do it. Target acquired. The Farragut is a lucky ship. I met you here. Target acquired, Captain. We're losing weapons, Locke! Captain. I have nothing to fear. You are here. Captain. Fire faces. Warhead destroyed. James. Let me help. Do you remember how we met? You were gonna say something. James. Let me help. What's wrong, James? I, I fear your James. James. Look at me. I fear James, your look child. at me. I did the best I could! I can't change anything now! What do you want from me? Commander Spock. I'm unfit for duty. I'm relieving myself of command. The ship is yours.
It's another dose of Alcacine. <laughs> another dose of brandy. Drink up. Think you needed a distraction to do that? I don't know what to think, Jim. I've never seen you like this before. Your heart's operating at 15% efficiency? Only a fraction of it is still healthy, and it's doing the work for the rest. If another cardiac event is inevitable, and this time you may not survive it. This is your life we're talking about. Snap out of it, Jim. You're not alone here. Really? Really? Duty first, always duty first. Comes with a price. You think I love those women, Bones? I think you loved a lot of women, Jim. Sorry. The answer is yes. On another ship, an alien planet, another time. Wherever I found them, I lost them. Never been able to let it go. Jim, I, I didn't know. You've always kept it buried, hidden. Command has no room for such indulgences. What is it you wanted to ask me? What with the captain? Jim, I saw them. You spoke to them, Spock. What did they say? There must be resolution. There must be peace. They need closure, Captain. Apparently, a resolution only you can give. How? They're gone. Get to the bridge. Tell Scotty to beam down the console to the planet. I'll be there shortly. I should order you to sick bay. You have some place more important to be? Now might be a good time for that little chat. <laughs> I'm glad you came. Please, sit down. I don't even know why I'm here, really. Spock, McCoy, they have some answers, but... not all of them. Well, I'll certainly help however I can. I relieve myself of command today, did you know that?
Never thought that day would ever come. I read your files. In the event, you might want to speak with me. Thorough, aren't you? I get that a lot, too. You've lost some people very dear to you. Your responsibilities have required you to make certain sacrifices. Sacrifices? Doctor, they died because of me. I failed them. Spock says they want resolution, they need closure, and I don't know how to give them that. Captain, with all due respect to Mr. Spock, he's wrong. Humans bury feelings of heartbreak and loss. We lock them away. And if we never come to terms with them, those feelings can paralyze us. I think you suffer from a great deal of guilt. You never had the opportunity to explain to them why you had to do what you did. Don't you see? It's not they that need resolution. It's you. But it's too late now. It's never too late to make peace with those we love. Where? Invite them to come to you. Perhaps in the place you last left them. Computer. Ready. Run simulation. Please define simulation parameters. Earth. 1930. New York City Street. Evening. Working. Program complete. Running simulation. James. You started to walk towards me. And then Dr. McCoy did too, but you held him back. You stopped him. I denied my heart to allow history to unfold as it was meant to. I would have loved to have shown you those stars. You were ahead of your time in so many ways. We spoke the same language. The very same. But my duty and your destiny. I understand, James. I know why. Be at peace. Commander Spock, I'm reading 23 additional projectiles approaching at full impulse. Scanning. They're tricobalt warheads, sir. Rig for tractor beam. Weapons control. Ready phaser banks, load torpedo tubes. Belay that order. Using energy weapons to detonate tricobalt devices would result in catastrophic subspace ruptures in this system. We can get a tractor lock on two, three at most. Lieutenant Uhura, open a channel to the Chalcidian Council. Loading program, sickbay. 
Constitution Class Starship USS Farragut, NCC-1647. Running simulation. Don't think this means you're getting out of our day tonight. Not a chance. Nakia, what happened to the crew? And you, I... It's not your fault, Jim. You know that, don't you? I knew the risk when I signed up for Starfleet. If I hadn't joined, I'd never meet, have met you. I wish. I hope you can forgive me. No. There's nothing to forgive. No more guilt, Jim. No more. Scott to bridge. We beam the console back to the planet, Commander. Not sure what good it's gonna do. Acknowledged. Stand by for further instructions. Perimeter alert, sir. Warheads are closing. Time to impact. Eight minutes, 44 seconds. Mr. Spock, Minister Amphidamus on Channel B. Our engineer has returned the defense grid console. Please ensure that- Then what are we supposed to do? Throw it at the incoming missiles? Without the activation password, it's of no use whatsoever. The Federation made promises. And we are doing our best to keep them, Minister. Kirk, I had a dream. You were gone. Mm. I almost wished they hadn't come back for me. I've never been so happy. Why? Why did you put yourself in danger? Jesus is at your side. Always. You were a gift I could never repay in a thousand lifetimes. Both of you. My husband. One does not repay a gift. The Great Spirit calls us to forgiveness. Of others. Do not torture yourself, my husband. Each kiss is as the first. Spock to Captain Kirk. Spock to Captain Kirk. Kirk here. 23 tricobalt missiles are en route. They will strike Calcis in six minutes. I still can't remember the password. Captain, I recommend moving the Enterprise to a safe distance to avoid thermokinetic shockwaves. 
Negative. Move the Enterprise into the path of the warheads. Divert all available power to the portside shields. Captain, while we can most likely survive the detonations, the spread of the missiles will make it impossible to obstruct all of them. It's the best we can do, Spock. I'm on my way. Lay in and intercept course. Full power to port side deflectors. Aye, sir. Heading 604, mark 47. Thrusters at full. All hands, brace for impact. This is not a drill. I made this for you. What's your name? You never gave me one. served so much more. A chance to live and grow. But you'll always be with me. I promise. I will carry you here every day of my life. Captain's Lock, Stardate 6182.9. We have successfully activated the Planetary Defense Shield, disabling the inbound missiles. Mr. Spock, I relieve you. I stand relieved. Captain on the bridge. Lieutenant, open up a channel to Kalsus. Channel open, sir. Captain, you have our sincerest thanks. When the Eritreans saw the result of your planetary defense grid, they requested that we enter formal peace negotiations. That's excellent news, Minister. Welcome to the United Federation of Planets. Captain, I wanted to thank you for approving my request for a separate office. Well, if I ever had any reservations about the need for a ship's counselor, I don't anymore. Thank you, sir. Irises? What the place is as irises? I never would have guessed that in a hundred years. Which would qualify it as a worthy password, as its goal is to not be easily guessed. Yeah, 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 but where do you get irises? Finding myself mildly curious as well, I conducted a library search and discovered a painting by 19th century Earth artist Vincent van Gogh. The title of the work, Irises. I wonder why I only painted one iris white. It is said, because he was lonely. How's the ticker, Jim? Ticking away. <laughs> you know, they say those that you love and lose take a piece of your heart. 
guess it's true. It certainly was for you. But that last piece of your heart, the one that refused to give up, I think that belongs to another lady.